Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I'm back with part two of my Grand Hauler for Novices video. Now in this part, as you can see, we're going to get that chassis finished up to the point of being able to drive it around. So fenders, fuel tanks, rear bumper, and a lot of the mechanism and electronics, including the speed control radio and receiver. So um, lots to do. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this part, and in part three we'll finish up with uh, the body work and the detailing. So, hey, let's get started. Well, in part one, we left off with our, our frame being finished. So now uh, it's time to install the transmission. Now, I've got a transmission here that's completely built, has a 55 turn motor in it. I have a separate video on how to build the transmission and I will link to that in the description but uh, it's also the video that was put up on my videos right before this so if you go to my videos you can just look backwards one and see my how to build the transmission video before we install the transmission we have to mount these these uh, brackets that hold the front step only on the right side the reason for that is when you put the transmission in, this blocks the ability to put the screws up from the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and install those. Matter of fact, we'll just throw one screw in there now just to kind of show you. And these use a short little, short little six millimeter screw. And we only install them on this side. If you install them on both sides of the transmission, you can't wiggle it into place. So it's uh, kind of a kind of a tight fit. But that's why you want to follow the Tamiya instructions because sometimes you have to do things in order which I have discovered many times the hard way alright I'll go ahead and put the screws up in the bottom and then we'll come back and install the transmission okay the transmission then just wiggles into place just wiggle it back and forth and it drops in I already put some Loctite on my screw mounts and we need our long drive shaft. The drive shaft gets a little bit of uh, grease on the ends here. And you don't want to forget it because you need to have the transmission loose to fit it in. Okay, so that's fit in and then we use four of the six millimeter screws to hold the transmission down. Put a couple in here. And then finally, transmission locked in. It's very tight fit up here around the front. That's okay. It's the way it's supposed to be. And then finally we need to install the fender mounts on this side. They actually don't show that in the instructions until a later step but it's, go it's good to go ahead and get that done now. So I'll go ahead and install those and finish tightening down the transmission. Well now we're to step E or bag E. So we've got bag E. Again, I've taken my leftover parts and put them in the first bin on my muffin tray. And we've got a bunch of screws. And we've got some bearings, which I'm basically going to throw away. So, now it's time to start making some decisions. 
since we decided, uh, or since I decided to use an unpainted Grand Hauler, it's time to install the fenders. But obviously we don't want to install the fenders before they're painted. So we're going to talk about paint and uh, some of the things to do to paint it. Uh, if you have a black one and you don't want to paint it, you're good to go. You can just keep installing. Um, but I'm going to make a few changes, so let me grab some parts and I'll be back. Well, this looks a little intimidating, but it's really not. So I've got some parts here that I want to paint. Obviously, I want to paint the fenders. Uh, this part right here goes behind the bumper and covers up uh, the back side of the lights. So I'm going to also paint that. Now, you could paint that black or you can paint it the body color. I think I'll probably paint it the body color. So I've got the fenders and that to paint. I've got, obviously, the body. And I'm going to show a little bit more here in a second about that. I've got the top plate and the back plate for the body. I've got my interior parts. Um, and then I'm going to actually go ahead and make do some other uh, painting. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to paint this plate, mounting plate, for the fifth wheel coupler that goes here. And I'm going to paint that the body color just because I want to. Now, the fuel tanks are all chromed, beautiful, don't need any painting. Uh, the steps, the side steps are also all chromed, don't need any painting. Um, the bumpers are chromed, the visors chromed, the exhaust parts and the, and the uh, air cleaners are all chromed. Don't need any painting unless you want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the visor, I'm going to paint the fuel tanks, and I'm going to paint only the little toolbox, uh, or toolbox, this top part that goes on the steps, and I'm going to paint that the body color. So I'm going to paint a few of the chrome parts, and to do that I need to strip the chrome off them. So you don't need to paint them, uh, but I just want to, and that's kind of one of the things I like to do with my trucks is a little bit of custom work. Again, if you've got a black one, you can pretty much ignore all of this and just keep building. But uh, I'm going to want to go ahead and paint. So I'll show you how I strip the parts. These parts, um, the fenders in particular, I love these Grand Hauler closed rear fenders. They're beautiful. When you clip them off, you also have tabs left over that you need to remove. So just be aware of that. Before you paint, get all the tabs cut off. There's a tab right here. Get everything smooth the way you want. The fenders are beautifully molded and don't need any extra work. I like to wash them with dish soap and water and let them dry before I paint them just to get any possible mold release off. The body. The body, again, is completely ready to paint. Um, and when Tamiya paints them, they they literally just paint them. But the body also has mold lines. There's a mold line across here, there's a mold line across here, it carries down here, it runs across the hood, uh, all the way down the sides. And I don't like the mold lines, so I remove the mold lines. And the way I do that is I just hit them with a black Sharpie so I can see them good and then I take an X-Acto knife and just scrape it sideways to get rid of the mold line. Now notice how that black Sharpie line also disappears at the same time. Pretty slick. Feel it being gone. Okay. Oh yeah, very nice. So that gets rid of the mold line. Now, 
What I'll do then is finish this off with some 600 grit sandpaper. I'm going to obviously remove the rest of the mold lines, but I just wanted to show you how I do that. And that's just a little thing you can do to make your truck just a little bit nicer maybe than the next truck. So, I'll remove the mold lines, I'll wash this in soap and water, I'll wash these in soap and water, I'll cut out all these other parts, then I'll spray some primer on them. And I will kind of show the painting um, throughout the rest of the build as I go. Next, I want to show you how I strip the chrome off the parts. Okay, so here's my parts that I want to strip. And what I do is I just put them in a bread pan and pour Super Clean on them, which comes from Walmart. And I'll let those soak. And I'll have to move them around a little bit once in a while just to make sure they all get covered. But let them soak for a few hours. I, I usually let them soak overnight. Why not? And then afterwards I'll just wash them with soap and water and they'll be ready for primer. So we'll get those stripped and while that's happening I'm going to wash and clean up my, uh, my other body parts and get those primered and then we'll show you how I primer them and paint them. Well now that I have um, parts washed and drying and parts soaking in super clean I'm going to go ahead and continue to do other things while I'm waiting for those. And the next step are the wheels. And they just pop through the tires. Pretty simple. And then just pull them into place. And that's all there is to it. Now Tamiya recommends that you put a drop of uh, CA glue in there, which I do after I mount them. I'm not going to glue these on this particular truck because I think at a later date I may change them to aluminum rims and you can make the decision to glue them or not glue them but if in doubt don't glue them to start with and then glue them later if you need to. The rears mount separately and you want to mount the tires before you bolt the wheels together because otherwise it's really hard to get this inner bead set. So there's an inner and an outer. Okay. Then there's alignment pins here on the back that just line up with the front wheel and fit into place. Then there's a capture area on the back for the nut. Okay, and then the uh, little Allen head set screw goes in for the front. There's three of those on each set. Just like that. So we'll go ahead and get all those put together. They go together pretty straightforward. Again, there's three of them. I just put one in there for now. Well, I have a little bit of uh, paint dry here. I, uh, I painted some of these parts in light gun metal and some of these parts in Tamiya TS50 Mica Blue. And I'm going to do the body in blue with a gun metal stripe. So that just kind of gives me a, a few pieces. But we're ready to put the uh, steps together. So they just mount like this in a standard self-tapping screw holds them together. Now the instructions show putting a piece of tape up underneath here. I never do that. It doesn't require it and later show you here in the instructions um, this base as you see has a bunch of slots in it and it can be used to hold the control panel for the Tamiya multifunction unit which is lights and sound 
and we're not installing that now but that's something that you can come back and do later I get that question all the time do I have to put it in from the start no it's very easy to install lights later and I'll talk about that a little more as we go on so I've got my step here we'll put it together and uh, then this tank that mounts on top of it um, okay this is two pieces it only fits together one way like that but there is a little bit of a trick here the you'll notice that the holes are close to one end and farther away from the other end this is the end that goes towards the front of the truck okay so we're gonna put this like so and and then these long screws mount between the chassis and screw down to hold it together. Now the reason we want the long end forward is that it moves the step further forward and if you put the long end at the back this will interfere with the uh, exhaust pipes later. So I've seen a lot of cases where people come and say oh my exhaust pipes don't fit and that's because the steps are on backwards. So four screws hold it on same thing on the opposite side I'll go ahead and put that together so I've got my uh, steps mounted here the next thing is on the instructions you can see there's a small decal that goes here and that is this one right here so on these these are stickers and the way I do it is I trim them as close as I can with a, a knife So that the clear carrier uh, doesn't show too bad. It's not as big a deal on this little one, but on the stripes, when you do those, you want to trim them really close. Uh, it just makes them look a whole lot better when they're in place. Okay, so it just peels off the sheet. Put my sticker there. One of Winston's hairs on there. Get that out of the way. And then that just mounts here. Okay, so that takes care of that step. The next step are the fuel tanks, so we'll go ahead and put those together. Fuel tanks just hold together with two screws. One thing you want to be careful of, there's uh, tabs here that when you cut the trees off, there's still little pieces of tab left, and you want to get those trimmed down completely so that when the tank halves go together, they sit nice and flush. You want to make sure there's no gap here. And then they're just held together with two screws. Now the end caps, let's see here. end caps have an alignment tab in them so they have to go on a specific way you can turn them and they'll drop into place now I usually glue these on you could tape them on uh, I like to use micro crystal clear which is a clear part cement and uh, I like it because it's not too strong. In other words, um, you could actually pry these parts 
apart later if you wanted. So I just use a little bit in here. Don't need a ton. Again, line it up. And glue those on. Now, again, I stripped the chrome off of these. Uh, normally, these will be chrome. But I'm going to paint them. And that's the great thing about these trucks. You can kind of do it the way you want. Okay. So there's the finished tank. And I'll go ahead. I'll be painting these for a while. But they mount... right up here like that so no uh, big secrets there we'll get those painted up and get those mounted well since I'm waiting for uh, fuel tanks to dry we're gonna go ahead and move on to bag F and bag F has the parts required for the bumpers some of the platforms that mount the body and the parts for the fifth wheel coupler. So we'll get those dumped into my little muffin tin and uh, we'll go through some of those steps while I'm painting fuel tanks and fenders. And then I'm actually going to um, go through painting the body just to show you um, my paint procedures um, might give you a few tips for painting. So I'll do that in a little bit. Okay, well I'm going to dump these out and then we'll go to work on the bumper. As we roll into the rear bumper, <coughs> there's a few parts and pieces. Now you'll notice the instructions show LEDs, um, but we're not installing the MFC, so we're going to just put it together without lights for now. Um, the first thing are these little clear lenses and they all the clear parts you do not want to use regular plastic cement because regular plastic cement like the Tamiya cement works by melting the plastic pieces together these have a little notch in them and so I use micro crystal clear for all the clear parts and I use it for all the chrome parts. So for this, I just drop a little bit in here. And then these pieces can just drop into place. tweezers because my fat fingers don't work good in some of these little places. Now the cool thing about Micro Crystal Clear is it dries absolutely clear. So you don't have to worry if you get it kind of on the lens. Okay, so those are in. And then there's two pieces. This drops over the two pins. And then this piece fits on like that. And it uses two of these little these little screws to hold it down. and that whole assembly fits together. Now, technically, you wouldn't need to put these two pieces on because the lenses are glued in. Um, but these do help to hold the lenses in, but I like to put them on every truck because if I'm going to install lights later, I want these pieces. And if I put them on, I know where they're at. So, 
later on if we want to install lights and eventually I will do a video putting those lights on this truck. We're going to build it as a stock truck first. Now I've got my parts where I want them. The next step is this upper part and it, it uses a funky little screw that to me it doesn't use anywhere else. It's a little short screw. It's not shiny and it just mounts in here. Kind of a complicated bumper on the on the grand hauler. And then finally over on this side it uses these pieces that I had painted earlier and they have a slot here. Again if we were going to have lights on it the wires would come out through here and it uses the longer more normal screw to hold that together. And there's only three of them. You can see it's only got three posts, there's not, even though there's four holes in the back plate it only uses three screws to hold it together. So I'll go ahead and put the screw here, put the other side on. So I've got our um, light holders mounted. Now they give you um, both clear and red lenses and they give you enough to do um, Oh, you could do all red, all clear, or any combination. The instructions show, um, let's see here, clear lenses here and here, and red lenses here and here. But what I'm going to do on this one is uh, put clear lenses everywhere. I can always change the color later, or not change the color, but make it produce a different color by just using a colored LED. So if I want amber for turn signals, I can use an amber LED in there. And, uh, and these just snap into place. You'll notice I used a little tiny bit of... They snap in pretty hard, but I still use a little bit of micro crystal clear to hold them in. So I'll go ahead and get those in, and then our rear bumper will be finished. And my little lens is in. The final step is going to be a license plate frame. Now... These license plate frames have a little pin on the back and they've got some holes that you could drill through and then glue it on lining up the pin. But I don't do that. I just clip the pin off. Much easier. You don't have to drill your bumper this way. And then the kit includes two types of um, double sticky tape, a thin and a thick. So I just use a little piece of this thin tape on the back of the license plate frame. And then put it where I want. Now, I'm only going to use one on this particular truck but they give you two for the front and two for the rear. And again, like all things Tamiya, it's smooth chrome on the top and there's a couple of white areas on the bottom where we cut it off. So we're going to want to put those down frame about right here and go wherever I want and then I'll throw let's see we'll throw a Texas license plate on it sharper than I thought went all the way through the backing and everything. I'm 
Okay, there. Completed rear bumper. Now our next step is to do the coupler. So we'll go to work on that. Set the bumper aside and we'll go to work on the coupler. Two different parts of the coupler. There's the, the fifth wheel itself and then there's the actuator plate and arm. We'll clip a few of these parts out. Now, in the kit there's also a coupler plate that has a rounded front end, but that part's not used. Um, we use the one with the flat front end. These pieces right here are used if you are going to add a Tamiya multifunction unit, so we don't need those today. So we've got the coupler and the hook. A couple of little tiny parts in here, so it's a good place to shoot parts across the room again. You want to be careful. And there in this bag right here, there's a little spring and there's a uh, another spring that keeps the coupler flipped in the back position. So uh, in the metal parts bag is this metal plate which drops in here and then we use a this screw right here with this style head drops through here like that and then there's a brass bushing that fits through that and screws down on that plate so it's a little bit of a trick to get it together because there's a few moving parts here little thread lock on there. We'll put this through the hook assembly. And then we'll just thread this down. This bushing is threaded. And then you want to make sure that this part is pulled back here when you tighten it down. Okay, and then we have our little moving part here. A couple small pieces go in there. There's a a ball that mounts in here. It's going to hold our actuator arm when we're finished. And then a couple of small screws and they mount through the spring basically a return spring and they just thread into the plastic so we've got one there this end and that returns our hook to the position that's uh that's the main parts of this coupler. And then you screw these down. They don't have to be completely tight, but just close. So the spring can work. There we go. Now the pivot plate mounts with this hole towards the back and you drop the pivot pin through this little spring and then it fits 
through the plates. You don't have to worry about where the spring goes just yet, but you do have to put a E-clip on here. And this is an E-clip that's a pain to do. Now, this assembly mounts to the coupler plate, and now you have to worry about where that spring goes. So that spring actually sits right up on top of that little ledge, and then this is held in with a couple of uh, 3x10 screws up from the bottom. And Plates threaded. And so you can see that that spring holds the coupler back. Another screw. And then that completes this assembly. This arm and plate, uh, well, I'll show how those go together. Let me clean my bench here. The coupler arm plate is pretty straightforward. Capture nut in the bottom of this arm. And the little ball screws into it. And there's a bushing that fits up inside of this. We use a screw and a flat washer on top. And then it just bolts down through here. And a capture nut in the bottom a three millimeter flat nut. And that takes care of those parts. This arm here, again they give you a full size drawing on the instructions. And now we can mount these two plates on the truck. This plate mounts back here. The frame is threaded. This plate mounts up here. And then the arm snaps on the two balls in between them. So I'll go ahead and get those mounted up. Fifth wheel is mounted. And you can see the little latch assembly there. Our, our chassis is actually um, starting to look like something. So now it's time to prep the floor plates, and those are pretty straightforward. Um, this one, the plates actually mount angled down, and they just use a 3 by 8 screw to hold them, one on each side. Like that. Now, at this stage, they also show you mounting the seat bases, but I don't do it that way. I glue them to the seats and mount them later. And I'll show you why. And then on the back floor plate, these mount 
angled up. So angled down on the front one, angled up on the back one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and put all four of those on and then I'll come back and we'll talk about this um, bracketry for the MFC mount. So time to prep this back mounting plate. On the bottom here, it's got some locations marked to drill holes. They're actually indented. So a standard 8 inch drill bit and you drill out six holes here and that allows for mounting the uh, this plate which becomes later on a mount for electronics if you add the Tamiya multifunction unit it mounts up here the uh, vibration unit mounts underneath you technically don't need to install this, um, but I always do because then it's all set for the future uh, if we ever mount an MFC. A little bit tricky to mount this. There's a, a couple of plastic pieces that fit on it, and then a very long screw that goes up from the bottom. It goes all the way through this and screws up into the bracket. It goes through one of the holes that we just drilled. Now the next step, I struggled with this one for a long time. Um, this battery mounting retainer clip mounts underneath here with a three millimeter washer on the bottom and this larger washer on the top. Well, I struggled with how to do that for a long time, but I finally figured out that I'd glue the washers onto this with a little tiny bit of medium CA glue and that way they stay in place while I slide this in. I have tried every other way I can think of to get that to work and this works the best so I'm gonna go ahead and glue those in and then this mounting stud with a hole in it mounts in this location right here and that becomes a retainer clip for the battery holder so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these washers on and then we'll come back and put those pieces in so I got the washers glued onto these. Now it just goes underneath this bracket and this tall shoulder bolt drops through it and screws on in. Yay! That's the easy way to do it. The final part are these plastic tabs which mount There's the four holes you drilled and they, they mount up through here with a screw that comes up through the bottom. Again, you don't need to put those in. They're designed to hold the vibration unit later, but I'm going to install them just so I don't lose them. So I've got my uh, my fenders painted so I can go ahead and install them. The uh, frame is threaded, so it's very easy to put them on. They just thread right in. So I'll go ahead and get the other side on. 
Well, since I've got my fenders on, I can now, now go back to the next step, which is installing the tires and rims. Uh, the rears just use a, a hex adapter that fits into a hex on the back of the tire. These only fit one way. They drop over the splines on the axle. The tire fits on and then a 5 millimeter lug nut. Wrench here. 5 millimeter little lug nut goes on. So I'll tighten that. I'll get these backs mounted and then we'll do the front. Now well, you can see our rear tires, how nice those fit in there and how nice they look. Now the fronts use a, uh, a ball bearing in the wheel and then it just fits over the axle. Then another ball bearing on the front side and then a lug nut. And you tighten that one down and make sure it spins freely. Um, sometimes with some aluminum rims, you've got to back the lug nut off a little bit to get that free movement. So we'll get the other one on, and that gets us uh, <laughs> that's starting to look like a truck. Well, now I can go ahead and install my fuel tanks. Um, as you can see, I painted them. I decided to paint the truck with uh, TS-50 Mica Blue with that um, gunmetal trim. So I, I painted the tanks and just used some chrome um, sticky tape to decorate the brackets. But they'll just mount the same. And they use a, a six millimeter and then a long, uh, let's see, this is a 15 millimeter on the bottom. This is a taller taller so put a little Loctite on those and put some on the bottom. We'll go ahead and get the tanks mounted. Got to be careful with these tanks. When you only have say the top screws in, you don't want to try to pick it up by the by the tank because you'll you'll break these mounting brackets and I can tell you that from um, from experience so you want all four screws in there before you handle it <laughs> even a little bit roughly bottom screws in and then we're and we're good to go. Now it's good and solid with all four screws in there. All right, we'll mount the other side. We'll come back and do the rear bumper. All right, we had already put the rear bumper together. So it just bolts on this rear bumper mount. And uh, a three millimeter flat nut actually sits in a recess back in here. They, they tell you early in the instructions when you're first building the frame to put those together and I've tried that but the nuts always fall out on me later in the process so I just wait until now to put them in and uh, it's pretty straightforward to do when you ask about when people ask me about installing lights 
I say it's easy to do later. It is easy to do later. I mean, two two um, bolts take the bumper off, and then you just pull off these back um, covers and install all the lights and put the bumper back on. So it's in the body cup comes off with four screws. So realistically, you do not need to install lights when you first build a truck. And I often tell people, don't get too crazy with your build to start with. It's real easy to go back and modify later. All right, there's our rear bumper. So now it really looks like a truck. Um, the next step is to mount these two plates that compromise the mechanism deck, and that's the base for mounting the, the uh, cab. So I'll go ahead and screw those down. The front mounts with um, a longer screw and the rear mounts with a shorter screw. And with this upper deck on, it's got holes through it that you can put the screw down through. But it really does help to have a magnetic tip screwdriver to do that. Um, so that mounts like this. And you'll notice that I did not use any Loctite on those screws because I am going to be pulling this back off later. But if I was installing this permanently I would use Loctite. And I'm going to be pulling this one back off later so I can mount the seats. I don't want to do that now because I'm going to be flipping the truck upside down to do some more work on it and I need solid things for it to sit on. If I have the seats mounted um, they break off. Another thing I've learned from experience. So that's why I do a couple things out of order. So we'll put a few screws in here. And a couple in here. Okay, so the floors are mounted. So now it's time to um, do some electronic work. What I'm going to do is install the uh, speed control. And there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one thing about the speed controls is the newer speed controls, the wires are too short to reach the rear mounting plate. So you can mount it up here in between the two seats but I don't want to do that. I want to mount it back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the two wires on the speed control and then I'm going to mount the receiver over here and we'll plug in our servos and then we can go back and hook up the shift and the steering rods and adjust those. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and get my soldering gear out and we'll solder this. I'll show you how I do that. We'll mount those and then we'll, uh, we'll run the servos and we can drive the truck around. So I'm going to go ahead and extend these wires and the way I do it is I just cut one of the wires and strip it a little bit. Now notice I'm not using my really good side cutters. I've got a pair of cheap side cutters I use for cutting wires and stripping wire. My good side cutters are only for plastic. So I'll just take these and I'm not going to go through the entire process because I've got a video on how to solder that goes through every little detail that I do but basically I'll just tin this up stay in there by wicking some solder into it take my 
extension wire and I just cut a random length a little longer than it needs to be. I've always found it's a little better to have it longer than too short. Okay, And then we'll just, now that these both have solder on them, we'll just solder them together. Perfect. Take a little piece of shrink wrap and we'll cover that up. And then my joint will be done. So now I'll just do the same thing here and then extend the other wire and this will be ready to install. Got my wires extended on my speed control. So now we take some of that thicker double stick tape, cut a little piece here, stick it on the bottom of the speed control, and then I just stick it down right here. That way my battery plug reaches fine. I'll pull these wires in around the, the back side of this, of this pin here. And then they will actually slide in underneath the deck. And then we can plug in our motor. Okay, so there's our speed control mounting. Now the receiver, radio receiver, I like to mount that over on this side. And I'll probably do it uh, that direction so I can get to the pins easy. Um, another little piece of double sticky tape here. and we'll stick this down. Okay, so now um, it's time to do our servos. And as I mentioned when I was unpacking the servos, uh, the leads aren't necessarily long enough. They, they probably are long enough, but the same thing, we can't run them you know, in a nice tucked away manner. Um, so we need some servo extensions and they just plug on. Now, I don't, um, since I'm not going to take these servos extensions off, I always wire them together. Piece of wire here. I use some soft wire. You can use, um, actually dental floss works pretty good. I'll just cut a couple pieces of wire here. And put this through here and that way my extensions never come apart. Now, uh, to run these, I typically pull them up through here, and then it's probably really hard to see, but there's a pretty good gap down here between the transmission and the side frame, and you can run the extension down that gap. out the back side.
and then I'll pull it up through this gap and up into the top. I'll run the other extension back there and then we'll flip it over and pull them up the top. Well, as you can see, I pulled these wires up from underneath. So now I've got the lead from the speed control and it plugs into channel 3. Channel 3 is this stick right here. Our steering servo is this one. So that's the steering servo. And that plugs into channel 2, or channel 1, sorry. Channel 1 is this stick right here. And then our shift servo, we're going to plug into channel 5. And channel 5 is this three way switch. So we have low, medium, and high gear. So uh, now we've got it plugged in. There's, a, there's an on off switch on this uh, speed control. I just personally just turn it on and just leave it set. Um, you could mount it with a piece of tape underneath the deck if you want, but um, I always just plug in the battery to turn it on and unplug the battery to turn it off. It's a good um, habit to be in to unplug the battery anyway. So, I'm going to turn on my radio and plug the truck in, and you'll hear some noise, and I hear my servo working. I hear my shift servo working. Okay, and the throttle works. Perfect. Okay. So, but our steering and shift didn't do anything. And the reason for that, of course, is we didn't hook up the um, steering and shift rods. And I'm going to do that now and show you how to adjust them. So there's my shift rod and steering rod that we adjusted way back in step 7. And those adjustments really are just kind of a raw adjustment. So this snaps into place and it is kind of a booger to get it. Okay, and then it's designed to snap over this ball. Now you can see that our our steering is not is not adjusted properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this to shorten this rod. until the steering is straight. You can do fine adjustments with the radio, but you really want to get this set up as good as you can mechanically first. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and snap that on. Now we should have steering. Yes, we do. Okay. Shift. The way I adjust the shift is you can see my my low, medium, and high gear. So I put it in in uh, second gear because our springs hold this basically in second gear. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to snap this on, but I can. I can see right now it's got to be shorter. We'll turn it a little bit out here where it's easier to do. Yeah, a little bit shorter. I hear Winston snoring in the background. Yep. I want to be my dog. He sleeps all day. Okay, that's a lot closer. Okay. 
and then we'll snap that one on. So now I can run it a little bit. Okay, so we've got low gear, medium gear, high gear. Put the tires where you can see them. Low gear, second gear, high gear. Second gear, low gear. And you can see what a nice, low, creepy speed we can get with that 55 turn motor. Okay, so we've got our steering and our shift adjusted, and our truck is ready to run. So now we can do the cool thing of putting it on the floor and driving it around a little bit and make sure everything works. Okay, so a little uh, test run in here. I like to just check the steering. You can see how nice it runs with that 55 turn motor. There's full speed in low gear. I'm going to switch to second. Quite a bit faster. And third, it's very fast. Way too fast. But everything's working fine. Transmission's shifting smoothly. Um, we're, we've got a uh, puppy dog there checking things out. So I consider that a success. We're going to tie up some wires now and, uh, and then we'll uh, end this part. So the final thing I want to do um, in this part is uh, just neaten up some of the wiring. Um, the way I do this is uh, first thing is I, I do the antennas and so I'm going to use a little electrical tape and I'll just take this one antenna and just tape it to the back edge of that deck and this antenna here I'll use a little electrical tape and just tape it to the side of the battery box. And I'll even go around the corner and tape it. The only important thing about the antennas is you don't want them together. You want them in different locations. Okay, so that kind of hides those antennas good. The uh, on-off switch, I'm just going to take a little piece of double sticky tape. And again, I just leave these turned on all the time, but I just don't want it flopping around in here. So I will mount it on top of the back part of the speed control there. And uh, then this wiring here, I'll just pull it up into a, a little bundle and put a small tie wrap around it. I don't need to get too crazy. And the kit comes with several small tie wraps. And I can just tuck underneath this deck. Okay, now everything will be out of the way of the body. Well, there we go. We took a box of parts and we've turned it into a driving, operating chassis um, and as you saw it works pretty darn good I think it looks really nice um, 
I know the black ones come pre-painted, but I still like to do my own paint. I just think it uh, adds something. So, there we go. Uh, grand hauler for novices. I hope you're enjoying this, um, and I hope you're, you're uh, learning something. On the next part, part three, we'll come back. We're going to do the body, and I'll go through some of the ways I do painting. We've got the mirrors to put on it. We've got the interior to do, um, grill, front bumper, and... Uh, and getting that all finished up so we'll we'll have a finished uh, beautiful looking truck at the end of part three so you want to subscribe so you know when that comes out uh, other than that check hobbyconcepts.net for uh, any parts and pieces you might need or truck kits and uh, look i really appreciate you watching give me a thumbs up i always like those and we'll see you next time